So I'm trying out this new camera setup and I hope this whole thing looks good. It's definitely different for me. The one thing is I think I need something for like this wall right here. Just like something, you know, I'll get to it eventually. But hopefully this looks good and I'm excited about this video. So let's get into it. Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Steven and I am now a second year dental student at the University of Tennessee Health Science Center in Memphis. And I am talking today about something that I do every single day and that is studying. I forgot to turn this on, there we go. So I actually had a comment on my most recent video from a fellow D2, just like me, a second year dental student. And he uh, commented and basically said, how do you study? What is your process? Uh, even in my second year of dental school, I'm still trying to figure out what works best for me for my quizzes and tests. And I thought this was awesome because it felt like it removed all of the pride that we may develop as dental students. This was someone who was just like me in their second year and they kind of threw their pride out the window and decided to ask for some help and for some advice from someone who was at the exact same position as them. And I thought that was just pretty cool, but we're all in this together. So I'm happy to help bring my thoughts to the table and let let you know what I do in my entire process. So hopefully this helps. So yeah, this video is going to be start to finish how I take the material that our teachers give us and I turn that into um, my final grades, which are usually okay. They're not anything super special, but I have kind of worked on this method and it's gotten me to this point in life and in school. So I think it works relatively well. But if you enjoy this video, make sure you let me know in the comments and of course, subscribe to the channel for everything dentistry related and all of the content that I have coming in the future. It's very, very exciting. So hit that subscribe button. So let's get into step one. And step one is sort of the process of taking a bunch of raw information from PowerPoints given to us by our teachers and turning all that information into Anki flashcards. So this is the point of the video where I'm gonna give my little Anki spiel. I think that Anki is amazing. I use it every day and it works great for me. It's a flashcard system if you've never heard about it. You're sort of in this YouTube study space, so you've definitely heard of Anki before, but if you don't use it, it's like I said, a flashcard system. We can go in and import our own information and kind of do with it what we want and we can create these cards that we can then go through and every single day um, using an algorithm that they've created, we can go in and study all of these cards. And by the time our test rolls around, we've utilized the process of active recall and space repetition to hopefully have learned all the information quite well. So I use Anki every single day. It's what I make my flashcards with, and I think it's perfect for me, but this is sort of the portion of the video where I'm gonna tell you that it's not for everyone. And if you've kind of experimented with it and it doesn't work for you, that's absolutely okay. Don't feel like you're some sort of a lesser student or anything like that. It's not for everyone. I know plenty of people in my class who have tried it and who don't love it. So give it a shot if you're interested, but don't feel weird if it doesn't work for you. But basically in this step one process, I'm taking the PowerPoints that are given to me by my teachers in all of my various classes, and I'm going through it and I'm turning that information into Anki flashcards. I'm making sure that I focus on things that are highlighted or bolded. Those typically tend to be, of course, what teachers want us to look at the most and want us to focus on when we're studying. So I will literally go line by line and make cards for pretty much all of the information. Of course, this changes uh, class to class. Some classes I've noticed just with time that we are essentially required to know everything on the slides. And so in order to make sure that I'm getting all the information, I make cards for every single bullet point. But for other classes, I might skip a few slides here or there. Some classes have a bunch of slides that are filled with pictures. A lot of what we're doing this semester is sort of examinations of the patient. So we have plenty of pictures of all of these sort of uh, head and neck exams that a dentist might perform. And things like that, of course, don't necessarily go into Anki, but all of the factual information and things that we have to learn goes straight into my Anki. And if you're interested in how I make my cards and sort of the process that I take here, I have an Anki playlist on my channel here where I cover a bunch of different aspects of my using of Anki. And I plan to continue to update this, uh, this whole setup of videos with just more content and more things that I'm learning about Anki as I continue to use it. So check out the playlist right here and that will give you an idea of some of the things that I do with Anki. Now, one interesting twist to all of this Anki thing has been moving from all online lectures to actually sort of a hybrid 
mix of online lectures and then in-person lectures on campus in our lecture halls. And of course, this situation seems like it's week by week because COVID hasn't fully gone away and it's kind of actually coming back a little bit. So the situation with the lecture halls is kind of up in the air, but I wanted to kind of mention what I do for both of these situations for future reference. When I'm at home fully and I'm doing school online at this desk, it's very simple. I take as many PowerPoints as I can in one day and I turn them into Anki cards and it's pretty simple in that manner. In the lecture halls, I worried at first that I wasn't gonna be fast enough at typing to make cards while a teacher was giving a lecture. And what I've found is that even though I'm a pretty average typer, my typing speed is not 160 words per minute like an Ali Abdal, but even with my average typing speed, I'm typically able to make a substantial amount of Anki flashcards in my physical lecture hall while a teacher is lecturing. I found that a lot of times teachers will kind of go off into a little bit of a, not a rant, but just sort of more explanatory information in addition to what is on the slide. And so I can typically sit there and type out a quick version of a card and make sure that I get all the information and the timing has worked out quite well for me. I just have to really pay attention and make sure that I'm sitting in the lecture and I'm typing the whole time and I'm not getting distracted by Amazon or Instagram or whatever the other things you might look at. So yeah, that's what I do for my Anki flashcard making process. Now let's move on to step two of my study process. Step two of my study process is essentially Anki scheduling. Now the thing about Anki, and this is something that I've had to learn over time, is that Anki is only as good as you make it in terms of how much you study. If you make a bunch of Anki flashcards, you're not gonna do well on your exam. However, if you make a bunch of Anki cards and then you study them every single day leading up to your exam, you're likely to perform quite well because of of course, the two processes that I referred to earlier, active recall and spaced repetition. So half of the battle of Anki is making the flashcards, but the other half and more important half is actually sitting down and studying them every single day. And this is something that I've only recently started to become very dedicated to, and that is actually making sure that at the end of the day, my test Anki deck has zero cards next to it. And that means that I've finished and I've studied through all of the cards that were put onto my screen for that day. And this includes both new cards that I've made that I made that day and then also do cards. So cards from past days that are coming back and asking to be restudied. And this is really important because once again, you can't fully experience the effects of active recall and spaced repetition more specifically unless you're studying these cards every single day. So make your cards and study them. It gets very difficult, it gets time consuming, but that's why we're in this position at high, high levels of education because we can do it and we do it and we do well on our exams. So in this second step, I'm sitting down every day. It really depends. Sometimes we have labs in the morning, so I won't really study all that much in the morning, but sometimes we don't. So a lot of, if, if we don't have lab in the morning, what I like to do is to kind of sit down in the morning with my coffee and try to just go through as many Anki cards as I can or need to. And then typically, like I said, we'll have some sort of lab at some point in the day. So that's four hours of time where I'm kind of away from the desk and I'm, way, I'm away from my Anki cards. And then of course I have my YouTube videos and my bootcamp stuff. So I definitely uh, do plenty of things in my day that aren't Anki related, but when I have little bits of time here and there, I like to go through and make sure I've studied all of my cards so that I can be effective on my exams. Okay, let's talk about step three of my study process. And this is an interesting portion of the process. So let's say I have an exam on Monday. Typically my exams are on Mondays and I've actually finished, let's say it's Saturday or Sunday. I've actually finished studying through my entire Anki deck. It's probably a thousand ish cards for one test, maybe 700 to a thousand. Let's say I've finished studying all of them and I've gone through them all and my deck says zero next to it. So at that point I have to figure out what to do after that. And so what I typically do is I actually go back in and create filtered decks using my tag system within Anki, which I need to actually make a video about my tag system, but I'll go in and create filtered decks that are specific to certain tags from certain classes or certain topics. And then I can go in and study only those cards once again. What I've found is that even though I've gone through all of my cards and I've actually studied them and Anki says zero as in you've finished studying all of your cards there's still a lot of information that's kind of slipped through the cracks and I don't know it as well as I should know it so going back in and creating these filter decks at the end of my studying is actually quite an effective way at making sure that I'm not forgetting the information that I saw maybe four or five days ago in the Anki deck I really like the tag system because it allows us to create these filter decks 
And I wanna talk more about that in the video, so that's on my list. I will be doing that relatively soon. But another thing that I like to do in sort of the end of the study process, right before my exam, is I like to go back in and make sure that I've studied all of the resources that our teachers kind of distributed to us, because oftentimes different teachers will give us different things, and it's kind of up to me to make sure I know all of it. So in that last couple days, I'm making sure that I go through everything that our teachers said to go through, and then I'm repping as much as I can with my Anki cards, and I'm trying to just make sure I see all this material as much as possible before the big day of the test. And then of course I have test day, so that's kind of my three steps uh, in summation. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to do sort of a 3.5 and add on to this video to give you a little bit of extra information about my process and my thoughts about studying in general. And the main thing that I wanted to hit on was actually your study space. So as you may not be able to see in this particular camera angle, but as you've probably seen in a lot of my vlog type videos, I have created sort of a really nice study space around on my desk here in my apartment and this is where I prefer to study it's super quiet for me I live alone so I don't have to worry about um, noise or anything like that and I have this really comfortable and nice pleasant space where I can sit down and get work done. But I know a lot of people who prefer to study in a library, for example. And personally, while I probably study here 95% of the time, there are times when I feel like I need to get out of my apartment and I need to change up the scenery. And when I do that, I'll typically go to either a coffee shop or our school library because both places offer sort of a different study atmosphere. And sometimes it helps to kind of change the scenery in order to get the creative juices flowing again and to kind of build up some study motivation. So I think your study space is incredibly important. If you plan to study at home like I do, make sure you have a desk that's spacious and that um, you, you feel comfortable at and that allows you enough space, uh, you know, on your around yourself and then on your screen to get as much work done as possible. And if you're someone who likes to study in the library, I've done my fair share of it. And if it works for you, it works for you. Do not change it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. My friends, getting to this position in my life has required many, many days, 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 weeks, months, years of studying. I've been doing it for such a long time. And I've learned a lot about my study process, but I'm not by any means an expert. I don't get straight A's or anything like that. I just wanted to offer my thoughts to you to hopefully give you one or two ideas that you can apply to your own study situation. We all have very common goals here. We're all trying to better ourselves and we're all trying to take those next steps in our lives and in our careers. Unfortunately, it means that we have to sit down at desks and do a lot of studying but at the end of the day, it's a true blessing to be doing what we do. Each and every one of us was given plenty of gifts, um, both mental and then also in our constitutions to have the desire to do these difficult things. So make sure that you appreciate that aspect of yourself and study hard because you know that you're doing what you were meant to be doing in life. That's it for me, folks. As you can tell, this video was made based on the request of a viewer of mine. So if you have any other ideas that you wanna see, uh, any thoughts that you have or just questions that you have, let me know in the comments. And I love to get to all of them and try to make as many videos as possible answering all of your questions. But until the next time, I appreciate each and every one of you. And this video was fun. So hopefully you enjoyed it as well. I will see you all in the next video.